In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The simple things, right? It has always occurred to me that whenever things are going awry, and it seems like chaos and confusion is the order of the day, then it's always best to get back to basics, the simpler things in life. After all, even though times are more complicated now this Christmas than even last Christmas, can you imagine? <laughs> we might just benefit from reflecting on the state of affairs on the very first Christmas. Now don't get me wrong, all was not just sweetness and light back then, what with the political situation of control of the Roman Empire and the great registration for taxation purposes, poverty and sickness were also present as well. But the significance of the event about to take place in the birth of our Lord far outweighs whatever was happening at the time. The question is always begged, like it is in the rock musical Jesus Christ Superstar, why did God pick such a backward time in such a strange land? Well, look at us now. What's the difference? Are we not still a backward time and such a strange world? But I digress. The simple things. First, the imagery of Christmas is all about light. Light in the midst of darkness. God lighting our way so that we can find our spiritual path that will lead us into God's kingdom, both now and in eternity. Our own promised land, so to speak. Jesus is the one who will guide us and lead us and love us and save us from ourselves. Isaiah puts it like this, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Such an appropriate image for any time and age. For us Christians, the star of Bethlehem is what guided those who had eyes to see to the place of Jesus' birth. Starlight is a natural marvel that requires us to look up, to look way up. Who among us at some time or another hasn't been camping or at the cottage or at least found themselves out of the light of the city and somewhere in the country where there is no artificial light at all? And haven't we looked up and seen the stars so vast, and so bright, and with such clarity as to see even the Milky Way? I have. Now there's a memory to cherish. And guess what? That memory can be reclaimed any time you want, even well into your old age. And another thing, it's free. Can you imagine? So try not to keep your head bowed low or even buried in the sand. Look up and see the light. A harp. I've always been fascinated with the harp. It's not a common musical instrument. No school band has ever had one that I know of. Pictures of cartoon cherubs plucking a five-string harp and flying around come to my mind. Maybe even a wedding or two. One of my parishioners in a previous parish played the harp for the Toronto Opera Company. I will never forget when she volunteered to play it one Christmas Eve. It was a sound that just lifts your soul, especially the crescendo of every string played consecutively from front to back. 
amazing. It makes you want to sing. From Psalm 98, sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing alleluia. Well, let us all get in touch with the voice of song in our hearts this Christmas. Let it out. Let it ring out. Let your cry be heard in song. Just sing. And it's free, too. Christmas carols are probably the most uplifting hymns in our hymn book. So sing them out loud and let the music lift up your soul. Some say that the greatest music is the music of the spheres that links us and the universe together as one. One planet sings to another. One universe sings to another. So let your song ring out and join the music of the spheres. A mother. A mother is love. From our beginning, we are cradled, we are nurtured, we are fed, we are protected, we are warmed, we are loved, we are encouraged, we are disciplined, we are free to grow, and then we are set free to venture out on our own. Mary, the mother of God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, who nurtured Jesus into the person he would become. We all have a mother who has been our strength when we were just growing into ourselves and finding our own way. Our mothers let us journey on, but you know, they'll never let us go. Believe me. My mother always thinks about her children, even at the age of 92. This Christmas, rediscover your mother her, who nurtured you, whether they are still alive or have gone to be with our Lord. And let's not forget our fathers, too. We have been shaped by these two very important people in our lives, and Jesus was, too. Hopefully, your shaping development and your memories were good and are good and positive ones. Home. All went to their own hometown. Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem. There's something about going home, isn't there? You know, home is a place of security, a place of peace, a place of love, a place of hope and a place of joy. Home is where your heart is. Even though our houses and places that we live may change from time to time, our home is the place where we gather with our loved ones, our spouses, our children, and yes, our pets. And even though our children grow up and move away, there are times when we gather together like Christmas. And there is no better feeling of love and warmth than that. I hope that you are able to gather with those you love this Christmas, even with what is going on all around us with the COVID. Staying connected to the idea of home is so important and life-giving, especially now. Finally, need. My reflection for Christmas this year is that we do not need things. We don't need toys. We don't need expensive electronics or computers, cell phones, big screen televisions, nor any other material thing, do we? We need a healing. We need a healing of love. We need a healing of being accepted for who we are. We need a healing of mental health, of spiritual health, and yes, a healing of physical health, don't we? We need the healing of Christmas when love came down to earth in the form of a little child, Jesus by name. 
We need the healing of Christmas when hope came down to a world that so desperately needed a sign that God still cares for the world the Creator created. We need the healing of Christmas when joy came down to a world that was living in fear and uncertainty. We need the healing of Christmas when peace came into the world and united all human beings to one another. And I think we call this peace equality, justice, fairness, respect, equal allotment of wealth, housing, water, and electricity for all, and a healthy caring for the environment. This Christmas, let's take stock, give thanks, stay safe, and appreciate the simple things. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs>